Hi, I'm Mark Civic, Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here to discuss a wonderful example of Southern stoneware that we'll be offering in our March 19th auction. Uh, this is a temperance keg, to our knowledge, a unique piece that was made by the Texarkana potter Jacob Bockley. Some of you may remember this piece from uh, the Antiques Roadshow. It was featured on a recent Little Rock, Arkansas edition of the Antiques Roadshow. And um, you can see it has this wonderful, well-thrown keg form with a rattlesnake constricting, constricting around the body of the vessel and actually peering into a hole in the top. Very visual, very graphic piece. The snake is extremely well done. And the body is decorated with uh, triangular impressed scales all throughout and then as it gets towards the head the scaling is done with a finer tool and then as it gets onto the head itself even a finer tool. These, uh, these comb lines. You can see a rattle on the end of the snake's tail. And the eyes are made out of applied clay beads. The entire surface of the snake has cobalt highlights uh, and manganese highlights alternated throughout. One of the fascinating things about the snake is the attempt at realism. You can see that the banding on the snake is done to mimic an actual snake's patterning with these crescent moon shaped cobalt strokes that are hollow in the center with a single line then the brown brown splotches throughout the snake is looking into the top of the vessel you can actually see he's he's peering in looking in the hole in a, in a really wonderful dynamic uh, fashion and the piece says a whiskey gauger. Now we have here the snake, the rattlesnake, actually gauging the amount of whiskey inside of this keg. Uh, whiskey gaugers came into being around the Civil War period with the Internal Revenue Act. And they were involved with gauging the amount of whiskey that was produced at distilleries as well as enforcing excise taxes uh, on that whiskey. So you can imagine the whiskey gauger was not a very well-liked figure. Um, not well-liked among the distilleries, not well-liked among the people that purchased the whiskey either because higher excise taxes meant higher cost in whiskey for the consumer. Um, so this is, a, this is a humorous, you know, tongue-in-cheek statement here. We have the, the snake, who is the whiskey gauger, gauging the amount of whiskey inside. And that could either be a reference to the evils of alcohol in the Kirkpatrick Anna style, which this piece is actually obviously modeled after. Um, talking about the evils of alcohol, so we have a snake um, looking into the vessel, but it could also be an actual um, an insult to the whiskey gauger himself. Um, the body of the piece has wonderful incising throughout. We have these oak staves incised with a straight edge throughout. Heavy combing to simulate the graining of the wood. And then over top of that graining, we have horizontal and diagonal carving with a wider stylus to create the wavy grain of the wood. And of course, this piece has manganese highlights to the top and to the sides, simulating the grain of the wood, um, as well as heavy manganese highlights simulating these great iron bands at the top of the base with raised uh, nails which hold the piece in place. This is a wonderful work of art. It's, it's wonderful in its own right, um, but what makes it truly exceptional and historically significant is the signature at the base, which reads, by Jacob Bockley. And very little was known about Jacob Bockley. Um, very, very little was publicized, has been publicized about Jacob Bockley. Um, in recent years. There's even theories that the Texarkana Pottery Man uh, was actually a pseudonym for, for the Kirkpatricks, that they were just having fun and they created a, an alternate uh, pottery that didn't really exist 
and, and use that on their pigs and things like that. Um, you can find some pigs signed by Texarkana Pottery. There's also a few snake vessels with southern maps that are attributed to Texarkana Pottery. But nobody really knew who this Texarkana Pottery man was. Um, my brother Brant Zip has done a significant amount of research on him over the past several years and identified him as Jacob Bockley. Um, prior to that time, there was only one other piece we were aware of that just said, by Jacob on it, as well as several known saying, by Texarkana Pottery. Uh, so we weren't sure of his exact identity. However, Brant fleshed it out through census research, through newspaper research, that uh, this man was actually Jacob Bockley, um, a German-born potter who came to America and was actually very interested in taking stoneware to a very sophisticated level. Uh, he sold things to uh, a wealthy railroad tycoon, a wealthy New York State uh, collector back in the 1880s who was involved with the Metropolitan Museum of Art. He displayed things at um, fairs and uh, at various uh, exhibitions. Um, there was uh, a time where he displayed things alongside George Orr and the Kirkpatrick brothers down in uh, New Orleans. Um, and so this is an unknown potter up until recently, uh, until the recent discovery. He's an unknown potter, a real master um, of stoneware that nobody really knew about until, um, until this piece was discovered, essentially. So we're very excited to offer it in our March 19th auction. This is a fresh to the market piece that descended in an Arkansas family. Um, you very rarely find folk art objects in American ceramics of this quality um, that take it to such a level of craftsmanship. And we're very thankful that this man put his signature at the base to rightly uh, assert his role as a ceramic master.